second part let's see how can we how can we debug this end routine okay so let's go back here now i'm going to show you how to debug an end routine okay so to debug end routine what was the first step so go to the transformation ABAP based end routine. I'm telling how to debug an ABAP based end routine. Okay. So go to the transformation. Go to this extras. Display generated program. Okay. So this is the entire program which our routine, you know, all the three start routine, end routine, fill routine, entire transformation, you know, is uh, program is this. So when we have data moving from source to target, so all the logic in be between, you know, is uh, available in this one. Now, since you written end routine, you know, search for end underscore routine. So it will go to like this first, not this one. We not, we want exact end routine here, method end routine. So you see, at 148 line, I can see end underscore routine. But we can go further one more step. One more step. Yeah, this, this is I want. Because if you scroll down here, method end routine, here you can see the code which you can see in your end routine or which we written okay so this is the place that where you need to navigate go to control f find um, you know type end underscore routine and type uh, you know search for your code where you written so in this code what is the first executable statement my executable statement is first this one if condition i am keeping my external breakpoint so you see if we select on the left hand side here it is internal breakpoint not this one you need to select on the top external breakpoint Select the line and then click on external breakpoint. Now you see on the bottom breakpoint was set for external debugging and at user level and valid for two hours. So this breakpoint is valid for two hours. Now remember from this screen, okay, now you need to open a new screen. Don't open already existing ones. From this, after keeping the breakpoint, after keeping the breakpoint, you know, select from this screen either you by clicking on here or go to slash rs7, you can open a new session. Okay, so that is important. So then navigate to your uh, object, G, M, E, D, something. Yeah, AS2 is my one. Now go to this two ways. We can uh, debug our end routine in two ways. One way is while loading data, it means uh, while executing the DTP, you can debug your data. All are, The second scenario is already request available in your source, in your target. Okay, now you want to debug this request, this particular request you want to debug. This also you can do. So now I am showing the way how to debug existing request. So that's a for that reason what I did, I went to this uh, manage of this my ADS form. I am seeing my request here. I am clicking on the monitor button. So in the monitor button, there is an option called debugging. So click on this debugging. Then you will get this kind of debug request. Here, for example, uh, you know, right, as per the, based upon the packet size, that, um, no, no, this is the filter section, okay, leave the tab, this is the filter section. Um, in real time, what will happen is, in our production systems, we will load data, and each DTP may fetch thousands, millions, or, you know, uh, records into the target. So, to debug our code, we may have our options like, do you want to debug each and every record in your source? or you may have you have issue one for one particular material it means for example you have four materials information all materials are fine coming fine except to m1 material so for m1 material the logic was not happening correctly or you have thousands of document numbers for thousand five document number you have some issue the routine was not calculating correctly for thousand five document number so if you want to explicitly debug that particular document number you can provide a filter here Okay, under BW document number, if you provide 1005, then what will happen? This debugging process will run only for the document number. Okay, uh, or else if you want to debug entire data set, you can simply don't give anything, click on execute button. Okay, now you see, I have the cursor stopped in my, uh, at my external breakpoint place. So I am in ABAP debugger, you know, and my break it, uh, cursor execution started at this level. Now, if I double click on result package, currently my result package contains 30 records. If I double click on the result package here, I can see all my 30 records here. 
and if you want to see this data in a better way click on this symbol you know and this symbol i can annotate it for you so we need to click on this particular symbol to get you know data in a grid view format okay so why i'm uh, i am what is the help of here here you can sort data you can filter data you know you can do some extra functions which are available which are not available here now go to desktop 3 so now not next press f5 if you want to go to step by step press f5 so select statement will be executed now when i press f5 uh, debugging already we learned in the earlier sessions so i'm not taking in detail again so after executing the select statement my internal table contains four records why because uh, what are those m1 m2 m3 m4 my you know material master table contains many records it means for example if i go to material master data it contains around uh, how many 12 records are there but in the debugging screen i see only four records in my internal table so i hope you know the reason because i am using for all entries in result package in my result package i have only four different materials are there that's why for only for those four materials i am getting in my internal table instead of 12 records now what i am going to do here it is going to perform loop operation now the four uh, for the 30 records in our result package a loop is going to start you see the uh, site apex here now when i press f5 here and then see that site apex one it is means the loop is executing first record in my um, result package so in my first record what is my um, if i double click on result fields i can see the record which it is processing now so it is processing 1001 document number so and so so m1 material quantity 83 and you see for the four records the values are null now press f5 f5 this is a read statement so read statement is a reading the data inter information from this internal table for the material m1 if i double click on the work area lsg matner i can see the values in my uh, inter work area of my material master data so m1 material is having a price as 10 and currency as INR. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to derive if size of bars is zero, it means if this particular read statement is successfully executed, then my size of bars on the top is zero. If it is zero, then only I'm you know executing these two. So net price is equal to, so what is the value in my you know work area for price 10. So I'm updating the same, currently net price is zero. So when I execute this line, 10 is assigned to here and uh, my currency is INR in the work area and in the um, output the result package I have null so I am assigning this one so once after assigning this uh, net price and the uh, document currency I am calculating amount currently amount is 0 now I am um, you know quantity my quantity is 83 and the value is 10 price value 830 was stored in my amount value and I am updating currency that's it loop over so it means one record was processed successfully now if i go to result package i can see for this one record the data was already updated you see amount 830 inr 10 inr so for one record the data was updated in the result package okay similarly this loop will now execute for second record you see site apex 2 it means the loop is executing for second record this will continue but i don't want to do you know do press f5 for each and every record simply i will keep my you know session breakpoint this is you see breakpoint set here in within the debugging by clicking on this uh, you know the, uh, color here i can get the breakpoint now if i click on f8 okay continue then all the loop will be done you see my site um, now it is at end method okay so by this time result package all the data already got updated with the information you see all amount was updated for all the records net results updated for all the records I'm done with it. Now click on. And then once you are done, just press say, you know, continue. You come out of this debugging. So you see, right, how exactly, you know, debugging to be performed and our how our logic is executing. So this is one way, means from request level. So the important point to be noticed here is we are debugging this at request based level. It means this request is loading 30 records. So this debugging will work only for these 30 records. Okay, means whichever document numbers, whichever data coming in this request, you can debug that request, that particular data only. For example, if in, in this act in this active table i may have hundreds of records okay but this particular request is currently 
fetching 30 records only. You can debug this 30 records only. You cannot debug the records which are already loaded earlier in below packages. Okay. And the next the other way of debugging is going to this particular DTP and then selecting this, you know, um, serial in the dialog process for debugging. When you, once you select here, if you click on simulate, then it will go to debugging mode. But you see, it not went to debugging. Why? Because the thing here is my DTP, which I am using to debug is a Delta DTP. It means if any request which is not already processed in my source data, that record will be it will come as part of Delta. But currently, all the requests in my source got already updated to my target. So if I execute this DTP now, there are no requests to process. So even deep debugging also doesn't work out. Okay, but if it is a full DTP, then debugging will work out by changing this you know process mode to debugging and simulate it. Okay, uh, remember this, uh, you know, uh, difference. So in production, in live scenarios, uh, we mostly, you know, debug a, both ways we will use it. But uh, in all the way, first step is to go to the program and then, you know, and identify our routine place, uh, keep one external breakpoint and open a new session from here and then do the debugging, either from request-based debugging or from using the full DTP. I hope it is clear. So the final point which I want to conclude here is, so in what scenarios we use N-Routine, okay? So we use N-Routine for multiple uh, scenarios. You know, for, if, for example, in our case now, to derive new columns information, we written N-Routine. To derive complex operations also, uh, means uh, whichever uh, field level routine also, we can derive this information, but it is not recommendable to, uh, you know, write select statements at field level routine. So that's the reason we always use end routine to write select statements and then using filling internal tables and then, you know, updating our new columns information. Okay. And if you want to modify something in the result package, for example, there are no new columns. Let's say there are no new columns in the data, but uh, in the existing columns, which are one to one mapped, you want to do some modifications or you want to delete some data or if you want to add some extra records for example from source i am getting uh, you know 100 records for this 100 records i want to delete some partial data based upon some logic i can do it or if i want to add some extra records you know 100 records i want to generate 20 new records based on some business logic then also i use this end routine Okay, so now these are all you know it. Uh, we already learned about, you know, uh, in our earlier sessions, how to write loop statements, how to write, you know, search statements, how to fill internal tables, and all we learned. So such functions only we use in the end routine. Only thing we need to know how, where to write end routine, what are the, you know, basic steps here. So in the end routine, the basic thing is we need to know about result package. Result package contains a target structure. That is important point. And the target structure, you uh, one you can play with it. Once the data came into result package, uh, you can play how you want it as per the business logic. I hope it is clear. So stopping recording.